Australia has the lowest population density in the world. Two people per square kilometer. Australia's... Ah, uh, forget this. Teenage Mugger approaches. You got a light, buddy? Yeah, sure, kid. Mugger says, and your wallet. Sue Charlton says, Mick, give him your wallet. Crack says, what for? Sue Charlton says, he's got a knife. Crack chuckles. That's not a knife. He pulls out a large Bowie knife. That's a knife. Dundee slashes the teen mugger's jacket and maintains eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball stare. Mugger. Shit! He and his friends run off. Dundee. Just kids having fun. You all right? Sue. I'm always all right when I'm with you, Dundee. You tried it! You tried that! Aussie 3! Here we are. We've been eating a lot from Australia. I'm Nick Novak with my pals Chad Hancock. I come from the land down under. Nick Geiger. Me too! <laughs> 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 and we're back with more Australia snacks. And Chad, recently, because of these snacks, I think, <laughs> uh, went all the way to Australia. Guys, I can't describe how excited I am about this episode. You know, it's it's a return to Oz, and I'm not talking about Toto. <laughs> you spent the entire plane ride back <laughs> yep, coming up with that working, line. <laughs> working on that joke for a 13-hour plane ride. <laughs> Go back. So yeah, I went to Australia for a two-week vacation. I wanted to recap it because uh, it's a pretty interesting place. Overall, we had a fantastic time. You know, lots of really, really great food. We ate a ton of meat pies. Like, I think we averaged at least one meat pie every single day. But started off with kind of like a, <laughs> a little bit of a <laughs> auspicious start where I got on the plane. We flew Qantas Airlines and the plane was clearly sort of like very old, probably uh, was already old at the time that Croc Dundee slashed that guy's jacket. <laughs> So, like, I, I sit down and, you know, like, I could tell it was old because the screens, the movie screens on the back of the seats were not touch screens. I'm, like, mashing the screen and nothing's happening. And I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to actually use this armrest controls like a plebeian. <laughs> this has nothing to do with Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anybody that knows uh, me will probably find this amusing. But I was I got up to go to the bathroom. And then I was trying to get back into the seat. And, you know, the airline seats are like a little bit crowded. And I was scooting across and sort of lost my balance and uh, ended up like smashing into my armrest and completely broke the armrest with my ass. <laughs> <laughs> just a big chunk of the armrest just came off completely and like I couldn't reattach it. So it just had to sit there sort of loosely next to me for the rest of the flight. Now, you've made a lot of comments on how big your ass is. You're not nearly big enough to be breaking airplane armrests. What <laughs> airline were you flying? It was Qantas, I think, which is the Australian airline. Mm -hmm. I think they just um, make airline airplanes shittier down under. I guess. I don't think they make asses like yours in Australia, though. <laughs> Definitely not, no. <laughs> My ass is the size of the entire Australian continent. <laughs> wow. Is that why they call it the Outback? <laughs> So eventually you did get to Australia, right? <laughs> yes. So I did get to Australia. And the very first thing, I, you guys are really going to love this. So in a previous Australian episode, you know, we heard from one of our Australian fans who claimed that no one in Australia ever says good day to each other. Oh, boy. So get off the plane, go through immigrations and customs, come out into the main airport in Sydney. And the very first thing you see is this giant fucking huge green banner that just says good day on it <laughs> did people then say that to you though i did yeah i did hear a couple people say it and uh <laughs> i heard somebody uh somebody claim that they've heard an entire conversation between two people where they just said good day to each other over and over <laughs> and over again and were able to like convey a bunch of meaning from the different ways that they said it that's not a conversation <laughs> did you also see a bunch of tasmanian devils and if so were they depraved perverts <laughs> i didn't see oh i did see a tasmanian devil in um we went to a wildlife park outside of adelaide where we got to feed a bunch of kangaroos and that was really cool and they had tasmanian devils there and it was like one of the weirdest looking animals very perverted <laughs> looking for sure 
We also, our trip was, uh, for those of you that follow celebrity news, our trip was timed where we were there at the same time as um, the Royals, Harry and Meghan. Hmm. They were visiting Sydney. So that was a very big deal for the Australians. That you were there at the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, Harry and Meghan are here. That's wonderful. But Chad's here. <laughs> Even better. There was, a, there was a day we were going to go check out the Sydney Opera House, and we got in the got in the taxi, and the driver's like, uh, you don't want to go there because <laughs> the, the, the royals are there right now, and it's super crowded. And I was like, what royals? Like, I had no idea who he was talking about. He just assumed I would know everything about the royals, like, as if I would give a shit about these, like, stupid royal family. You're more likely to think it's a Kansas City royal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're like, wow, I didn't know they traveled all the way to... But, um... Yeah, we ended up uh, like sort of switching our schedule around and taking a, a boat ride out into the harbor. And as we were boating past the opera house, we saw just hundreds and hundreds of people just all gathered around it, just hoping to like catch a glimpse of these two people who couldn't give less shits about them. How was the uh, food? The food was by far the highlight. I, every single meal we had was fantastic. I, so I, this is not an exaggeration. I gained six pounds in two weeks while I was there. What is in a meat pie, an Australian meat pie? So you can get all different kinds of things. Um, Usually, like, the best one I had, there was, like, sort of a beef brisket one, which had, like, barbecue beef brisket in it. Uh, But you can get, like, a chicken pie that might have chicken and leek or, or, like, a chicken pot pie kind of thing. Um, Or there's veggie pies. Or the other big thing is sausage rolls, which are delicious. It's just basically, like, you know, a ground sausage wrapped in, like, a puff pastry. Those were all delicious. We also ate a lot of really good Asian food. Which uh, seems like, you know, why why did we go to Australia and not eat, like, huge hunks of steak? Yeah. But... There's a ton of seafood there, too, right? Because they're, I mean, at least along the coast, it's basically lobster and all that kind of crap, right? Yeah, had some really good fish and chips. There's something called bay bugs that I wanted to try but didn't, which sort of looks like a lobster without any legs or claws. <laughs> like, it just looked like a giant lobster tail. But I never went anywhere that was serving it. Outback Steakhouse? <laughs> <laughs> didn't go to Outback Steakhouse. Let's see, what else? So one of the things that I thought was sort of weird there, Geiger, you would mm-hmm. appreciate this. They don't actually drink drip coffee there. Oh. So you, they have coffee shops everywhere, but only they only have like espresso machines and stuff. Yeah. And if you want to get an actual coffee, the closest thing they have is called a long black. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so you go into the bathroom and there's a hole in the wall and you stick your cup out. <laughs> right. It's called Morning Glory. <laughs> and basically what they do for a long black is they put a shot of espresso into a coffee cup uh-huh. and then fill the rest of it with water. So it's just like super watered down espresso. <laughs> I know like when I went, okay, wait, I'll let Novak get his joke in. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have no joke. Oh, you got a grin on your face. Well, You're like, huh? This is, I mean, why does there even have to exist something called a long black that has to be brought up on this podcast? Geiger, <laughs> you'll enjoy this. They call it the penis. Oh no! What am I supposed to do? No, I mean when I went to Germany um, for work, there that's the same. Basically, they had like the coffee machine there was essentially an espresso machine. So I just drank the same number of cups I normally would, and then just was like vibrating. I was so wired up because it was like three times the strength. Did they call it the short white there? They called it the 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 plump white. It was. Uh, <laughs> So here's something I wanted to ask you guys, too. We not- I noticed when I was watching walking around Sydney, I started to see all these um, signs for places that uh, it was a bunch of different stores and they were all called VIP Lounge. And the sign was like sort of neat, cheap neon with like, you know, lights all around it and stuff. Yes, those are strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what would you guys <laughs> yeah. think yes. VIP lounges are? So that's what I thought, too. Turns Ooh. out they're actually just slot machine parlors. Apparently, like, gambling is is legal everywhere there, and there's, like, so many slot machines, they call them pokies, and they're all called VIP Lounge because they couldn't actually advertise that they were slot machines or something like that, but they definitely look like strip clubs, and I was saying saying to to my wife, like, is VIP Lounge Australian for strip club? (laughs) So, essentially, the name of everything in Australia sounds filthy. It's like the long black, the pokey. The VIP lounge is like a bank. <laughs> there's a there's a uh, there's a beach, a famous beach in Sydney called Manly Beach. <laughs> Speaking of Manly, um, the question we all been waiting for: Did you 
see Cracked and D. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him. I saw a little bit of him and everyone. <laughs> right. I'm assuming he was there to pick up the Royals <laughs> and uh, to, uh, formally greet them when they came in. There's something about people from Australia to where now that you've you've spent time with them, um, if I threw an Australian in a lineup, you could pick out that person. Oh, for sure. There was like, and uh, they're the nicest people, but like there is sort of like a sameness to their appearance, which uh, like everywhere we went, we went to a couple different places in the, like four different cities in the in the country, and it was just kind of like everyone sort of looks like like a, a very very friendly lacrosse bro. <laughs> I I picture a lot of mullets. I don't know why. Is that true? Ish. Mm, didn't no, see any no mullets. mullets okay. Yeah. No mullets. But definitely everyone looked like they could beat the living shit out of me, for sure. <laughs> well, doesn't... I mean, that's a low, that's a low bar, doesn't but... Doesn't every country basically say Which that? Which country did you go to? You've traveled everywhere. Which country have you gone to where you didn't think people could beat the shit out of you? <laughs> <laughs> I... I felt pretty pretty safe in Laos. They're all kind of short there. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, like towering over everybody. <laughs> well, I'm sure we will hear more details as we uh, go through. and uh, Chad will be giving us a little quiz about Australia later on. But let's, uh, as we continue the discussion, start to try some food, too. Now, these snacks originally, Chad, were given to you uh, by one of your pals that you saw while you were there, right? Yeah, uh, these are the last three snacks from the package that was shipped out uh, from my buddy Adam. So shout out to Adam. I did meet up with him while we were there. He lives outside Adelaide, and um, they're, him and his wife are very gracious. They hosted us for a couple days, and uh, we had a really great time with them. So thanks for hosting us, Adam, and thanks for the snacks. Do they still listen to the podcast, or have they given up? Uh, yeah, they, actually, he told me a funny story about how so they have a daughter now who is going to be two pretty soon. And so she's kind of at that point where she starts, she's starting to like repeat, you know, what the words that she hears. Uh... <laughs> so she hasn't listened to the podcast. <laughs> Chester Cheetah. He, 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 t- he told me he had been listening to the podcast, like in the car, driving her to and from, you know, daycare or whatever. And then, <laughs> and then one day he put it on and it was, it was us just like swearing up a storm. And then all of a sudden he hears her say like shit or something. And he's like, Oh, got to turn this off now. <laughs> we have a uh, three, a five, three, five point rating scale for these snacks. And it's a love debt. Like that, indifferent to that, dislike that, and hate that. And uh, we're going to start out by trying a little packaged candy called a minty. The company is Allen's. Now, Adam is convinced that we are going to hate these, but we'll see. Why would he ship them to us? Well, you're going to hate it because you hate mint. Ooh. But It smells, you know what it smells like? Um, the like after dinner mints uh, that you'll get sometimes in a restaurant, like a hotel. It does, yeah. Like an Andy's mint. They're kind of like a chalky. Uh, oh, right. like those, like those little, like, like chalky looking ones. Or they'll usually yeah. be like they'll be like a red and white swirl in yeah. them or something. Yeah, and they'll like melt in your mouth. This thing is much harder than I expected. It's very hard. Are you supposed to suck it or chew it? Mine is soft, but there's just a little hard part to it. Maybe they were also like we've had them for a while. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> I think these were originally mailed to me back in like August or something. <laughs> it's now November. Mine's not. <laughs> Mine's chewy. It's definitely like one of those mints that like you feel it coming through your sinuses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This would perk your breath up after a nice long drink of long black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this hard white goes well with a long black. <laughs> <laughs> That's generally true. When your breath smells like long black, <laughs> you just pop in a minty. <laughs> um, All right. There is no way I'm going to be able to finish Chad's... this entire fucking... <laughs> <laughs> so big. Entire thing. So big. It's so much mint. It's it's probably uh, maybe three <laughs> centimeters by one centimeter. It's like, the, it's like the size of... It's like a slightly swollen Jolly Rancher. That's what you think is too big for a piece of candy? Yeah, it's a little bigger than a Jolly Rancher, like a chewy Jolly Rancher. Novak, I do like how you kept it metric system for our Australian mm-hmm. episode. Absolutely. I hate the English system. <laughs> um, Geiger, what, uh, you're going to lead us off and tell us about the minty. First, did you finish the full minty? I got out my fork and knife, and I cut <laughs> it up into pieces. I made a real meal out of this colossal candy. Um, I am trying to get it out of my teeth. This is one of those things that might 
<laughs> ruin the rest of the snacks because it's just it's like my whole mouth is so mint now that like I won't taste something else. It does really stick around. Um, I do also. I don't know why, but there's a little. Is there a little drawing, a little cartoon of a cat sleeping on a guy in bed and just going meow on it? Because I think it looks hilarious. What? Oh yeah, I do have that. I do have that drawing. Oh. And then I have a different one with uh, a lady on a couch and a dog's approaching her. So yeah, I don't know if that means. Like... Mine is just a guy driving through the rain. These <laughs> are <laughs> sad impressionist paintings. This is just a depressing <laughs> scenes of Australian life. A dog oppressing <laughs> a dog approaching a single woman, a uh, cat person too depressed to get out of bed, and someone driving by themselves. And it, they have a saying, it's moments like these you need minties. Wow. It's moments like what? Are there, is this Zoloft in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel any happier. <laughs> what are these moments? These are just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got another one, other one. There's one of like someone in a movie theater who's, it looks like they're stuck behind someone who has like a big fluffy hair. <laughs> I have one where where the guy is going to the pole where his bike used to be, and all that's left is the front tire attached to the pole still, like his bike was stolen. <laughs> and then there's one, um, this guy, he has a gun in his mouth, and he says, I can't do this anymore. And it's really depressing. <laughs> one where he, a guy is like in the corner masturbating while his wife fucks another dude. It's really sad. I mean, they're really... <laughs> Yeah, one of his guys like stuck in a boat and sharks are surrounding him. That's yeah. I I, oh, so here, I have another one. There's one a guy sitting on a bench reading a newspaper, and then a surfer looking longingly at the ocean with and there's no waves in it, so he's upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Australian problem too. I don't get this. Like, why do you need a mint when your cat is laying on you in bed? And say meow, because you don't want to wake up. The cat's waking you up. It's time to get up. You don't want to do it. You know what will cheer me up in this terrible situation? Eating a very sticky mint. (laughs) Wait, okay, so I got another one here where there's a guy in a coffee shop, and he says, all I want in life is a coffee. And then the guy says, too bad, all we have is long black. Right, <laughs> and the guy's like eight feet tall. I have an actual one where I. This is an actual uh-huh. one. There's a, a moving truck that's clearly filled to the brim, and a guy is holding like four other packages, looking at it, like wondering how the hell he's gonna get his stuff. Made. These are like range from depression to mild inconveniences. Like the surfer guy just can't enjoy his hobby that day. Make another trip. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, this thing was fine. Uh, it, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it. I like the taste of mint. I'm a big fan of the taste of mint, so I like mint things. This is pure mint. It basically tastes like it is a really strong mint, almost like a chewy Altoid. Not that strong, but like one that will, like Novak said, he was right. It'll like course through your throat and nose. It is way too sticky it's almost like a mint caramel if that makes sense like a, like you eat those like packaged caramels where they get stuck in your teeth and you really have to wedge them out of there i don't like that sensation where there's candy like stuck in my teeth and i have to really work to get it out but um my breath is definitely fresher i definitely could uh put the moves on my lady friend now because my breath is spectacular and normally i smell like a garbage truck so right uh i would give this <sighs> I would probably, truthfully, I know I made it sound pretty good, but I would probably give it an indifferent to that. Yes. <laughs> Beat around I'm the Probably bush. an indifferent to that, only because, like, it's good, but, like, I'm not, I would never want to eat it. I mean, they're not, they're just one note. It's just a mint candy. It's almost like if they were in a dish after dinner as you're walking out of a restaurant, I'd grab one. Other than that, I really have no purpose for eating this. It doesn't taste great. It just freshens your breath. All right. It starts with an indifferent. Chad, what do you think? This thing's really gross. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I don't. I, mean, I think you guys saw, but I spit it out after a couple bites. It's too sticky. It, yeah, like you said, it was getting stuck in my teeth. I don't really ever take those after dinner mints. I just like to walk around and have my breath smell like you know burger for the next few days or whatever it is. So yeah, I'm I'm really grossed out by these things. The only redeeming quality is these hilarious pictures. Hate that. The cartoon for Chad is Chad, like, holding his stomach, and there's growling noises, and all that's around him is bowls and bowls of minties. <laughs> this is one, another one. Um, uh, 
I'm I also think this is a hard rating. I I like these more than like a one of the uh, peppermints you get from a restaurant when you leave. I think it's better than that. I'd rather eat this. Right. Um, and I do like the after dinner mint mint taste. I think this is the right mint taste for me. Um, because I'm not a huge peppermint fan of this. Is somewhere I don't even know how to describe it, but it is a little sticky. Um, but I kind of like it. I don't know why. And I and I think the little drawings would make me eat more because I would want to see <laughs> what other <laughs> great scenes they have. So I'm going to go with the like that. I do. I kind of like these. So Now, Novak, do you think one problem might be with eating it after dinner? You just eat this big meal, and then you have this giant piece of candy you have to try to finish. Like <laughs> You almost need a separate to-go box for We We really uh, ran the gamut there from uh, hate up to like, so... Um, the other two snacks will will have a chance in the game here because that's uh, sort of an average start. So let's um, do the cheese, the twisties cheese next. Um, so on front, <laughs> the saying is, life's pretty straight without twisty <laughs> long black. I mean, twisties cheese. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh-huh. So these look like Cheetos, kind of, I think. Exactly like Cheetos, but much lighter flavored, lighter colored. They don't smell, yeah, they don't smell like Cheetos. I actually, do you guys like Cheetos? I really don't like them that much. I do I like Cheetos. we covered this on the Hot Cheetos episode. But you were eating those Hot Cheetos after the potted meat. <laughs> That's why I don't remember anything. While you guys eat those, I'll tell you this one other story I had. We had this Uber driver when we were in Brisbane that was taking us to the airport. And um, as soon as we got in the car, he immediately got this phone call. And he's just like, oh, do you mind if I answer this? And we're like, okay, sure. So he puts it on speakerphone. And it's like, it's a woman calling him. And we're like, oh, wonder where this is going to go. Because before he answered, he's like, I haven't heard from her in a while. We're like, oh, is this some old flame or whatever? It ends up being just somebody calling him to like schedule a massage. I guess he had some side business for some massage. But after he gets off the phone... Uh, my wife made some joke like, oh, we thought maybe that was going to be some woman calling saying like, hey, by the way, you have a kid now or something. <laughs> Say hello to daddy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. And like, shockingly, he says, actually, that's already happened to me before. And we're like, what? And then he spends the whole 20 minute ride to the airport telling us this story about this woman that he used to live with a long time ago. You know, they had one night together where too many drinks, one thing led to another, blah, blah, blah. And then it was like this whole thing about how she said, oh, this baby is yours. And he's like, well, the timing doesn't work out. And like they ended up taking a DNA test and then that proved that he wasn't the dad. But then like she kept coming into him like over the course of the years, like every couple of years, she'd come back and be like some excuse about why the DNA test was wrong or whatever. And we're just sitting there like... Can you just take us to the airport? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really want to know. <laughs> Wait, you are still asking him to take you to the airport? Was the car not moving? Was it- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. That was over the course of the 20 minute ride to the airport. But he, so he spends about 15 minutes telling us this story. And then like, you know, there's still a couple minutes to get to the airport. And then there's just kind of like silence. And then he's like, so where are you guys headed? <laughs> <laughs> That's always the worst. Like, I hate talking to cabbies. You're just trapped in the car. I just, I know they're trying to be nice. I just don't want to talk to you. Just take me to the airport. I'll look at my phone and pretend we're not in the same. I don't know. I just feel awkward making small talk. I remember this one guy, with my, I was with my wife and some friends of ours, and we were in the car in Chicago. And I don't know how it came up, but we made a joke about uh, people that, like, made a mess in his cab. He's this Russian guy. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, the people eat their burritos and the lettuce falls out. And I make them clean it up. I put the, I point them back in there and I make them clean it up. And I'm like, uh, okay. And he's like, I said, what happens if they don't? He goes, oh, then I'll get angry and mad. I go, what do you mean? He's like, and he's turning around and talking to us <laughs> in the back seat while he's driving, going, just screaming, you know, the guys, they're tough, but the headbutt is the nightmare. The headbutt is the nightmare. And he's like jacking his head forward like he's headbutting him. And I'm like, drive the fucking car. Like turn around. He's just weaving through lanes, not looking in the middle of the city. The headbutt is the nightmare. And I'm just like screaming. I'm like freaking out. Although it was pretty funny. And now every time I see that guy, I'm like, hey, man, the headbutt is the nightmare. And we just joke about it. But... <laughs> like, actually, his driving is the nightmare. 
Right. Yeah. And then he then he headbutted all of us on the way out. <laughs> Why he was screaming down. that? Were you like quickly picking up the lettuce that you had it spilled all over the back seat? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like the headbutt is never. He turned around and I had a giant ogie, you know, like all the stuff falling out the back. Oh, no, whoops! <laughs> I don't know, just winging it out the window. <laughs> All right, Gary, what do you think of the twisty? Twisties, huh? Yep. Uh, they're fine. They don't, I mean, they, they are, as much as they look like Cheetos, they don't taste like them. Um, they don't have that annoyingly overly cheesy flavor that Cheetos have. I like these way better than Cheetos. I don't, they're not great. I, you know, like, I just, <laughs> I dislike Cheetos. I would say these, again, are kind of indifferent to me. They're just, they're just, the cheese flavor isn't that strong. Which is good, but it also kind of makes it an innocuous flavor. I don't. It doesn't really taste that strongly of anything. They're just kind of there. I don't like the consistency that much. Like the the hard knobby snack is not a big. I'm not a big fan of that. So I, I would just kind of. They're fine. I wouldn't ever seek them out again. Straight down the middle, indifferent to that. All right, guy, you're just uh, feeling pretty indifferent to the snacks that we're eating. This. Just nagging everything <laughs> today. Yeah. Um, Chad, what do you think? I like them actually. Yeah, these I, I'm also not a big fan of Cheetos, but these aren't overly cheesy. They don't taste quite as processed. I mean, I know there's no like twisties tree that these are falling off of, but <laughs> they seem to taste fine. I feel like I could just keep popping them in my mouth and yeah, not have any problems devouring this whole bag. I'm not going to, but I could. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, these are going to get a like that. I could if you wanted me to. <laughs> Do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> These are worse than Cheetos. Mm. Um, mm, interesting. Here's the thing. It's, it's basically a Cheeto mm-hmm. with less cheese on it. Yep. It's less cheesy, and it's slightly maybe less crunchy. They are also less like hard, yeah. It seems like a generic Cheeto or something like that. Um, like Oh, like a like grocery store brand Cheeto. Right, right. In consistency, they kind of remind me more of like the big curly cheese puff you know, like the big, like elbow-shaped cheese puff they sell. Right. Um, so uh, I don't know. It, to me, it's just I. I know you're saying that it's not too much cheese on it, but if I buy a Cheeto, I just want to eat a ton of processed cheese. Like that's kind of what I'm shooting for. And this is like, why would I bother to eat it? Um, it doesn't taste bad or anything, and I kind of go back and eat a little bit here and there, but I can't get it given any more than an indifferent. I could take it or leave it. So two indifference and a like, which still puts the twisties ahead, thanks to Chad's hate of the minty. So um, the one snack left to try to challenge the twisty. But first, uh, Chad's going to lead us through a quiz. So while I was in Australia, um, I learned uh, some of the Australian slang. So like long black as an example of that. Also, um, good day and crikey and <laughs> you learned what good day man huh so i'm gonna crack that code for you <laughs> uh so i thought i'd give you guys a little quiz on aussie slang here so i've got seven items and basically what we'll do is uh i'll give you the the slang and then i'll give you a usage of a sentence uh each of you guys give me a definition we'll just alternate who goes first okay uh so geiger you go first because you're you're the podcast resident wordsmith. <laughs> yeah, right, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first up, this one should be pretty easy, but we'll see. Don't say shit like that, you asshole. <laughs> setting me up to be an asshole here. <laughs> <laughs> you setting me up to be should an asshole. Should be real easy. <laughs> you missed it. What? I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Sour cream. <laughs> <laughs> Kangaroo. That's some <laughs> slang that we use here. Oh, that means horse in Australia. <laughs> so this first one is one that, that we actually do use here in the U.S., but not very commonly. But I was surprised in Australia to see it used everywhere, okay. like signs and so on. So it's brecky. And usage in a sentence, who wants brecky? <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, I have two guesses. Either he's breakfast or like... Someone named Becky, and I'm going to say it's probably breakfast. (laughs) Okay, I think it's probably, I think it's probably lunch. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It actually is breakfast. Yeah, in your face, Novak. (laughs) 
You thought it was lunch, you dumb fuck. <laughs> you set me up to look like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear like very obnoxious people say that, like here in the US, so they'll be like, Oh, who wants some brekkie? you know, that sort of thing. But um it, it was like on signs for restaurants, like serving brekkie from seven to ten, that sort of thing. I have never heard a single American person say that. So. Me either. Maybe like a two-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's big in like Southern California, like LA Valley girl types. Oh, okay. That sort of thing. So number two, this one's one of my favorites that I learned. Bogan. Okay. Bogan? Bogan. U- usage in a sentence, that person is a bogan. Oh. I'm going to say, so it's a, it's a, all right, I'll go with uh, just a general jerk. Yeah. Geiger, what do you think? My first instinct is someone who likes to use toboggans, <laughs> uh, but I'm guessing that's not it. So <laughs> They probably don't have a lot of sledding in Australia. Pretty warm weather region. Um, I would just, I was going to say jerks. So I'll go with someone who's just like an idiot, like who's not very smart. Ooh, I think uh, Geiger's a little bit closer there because it's slang for a person whose speech, clothing, attitude, and behavior are considered unrefined or unsophisticated, basically Australian trailer trash. Okay. So they use it right. to like rednecks or trailer trash, yeah. Okay, number three, rice bubbles. Usage in a sentence, I'm going to eat a bowl of rice bubbles. <laughs> like Rice Krispies. <laughs> That's the, literally the only thing that makes any sort of sense to be like a Rice Krispie type cereal. What do you think, Noek? Um, oh, you said bowl of. I can't even think of anything good. Let's say sushi. <laughs> bowl of sushi. Yeah, sit down in a nice refreshing bowl of sushi. <laughs> That's how they eat sushi in Australia, out of a bowl using two toilet sticks for chopsticks. Well, that's how the Bogans eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how the Bogans eat it. So Geiger nailed it on the head. It is Rice Krispies. It's not really slang, but I saw that in the grocery store, the box of Rice Krispies, and it was called Rice Bubbles, and I lost my shit. What is it right above the box of sushi in the cereal aisle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, number four, Bushman's Hanky. So usage in a sentence, look at all these gross people using the Bushman's Hanky. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. That's prob look at all these gross people using the Bushman's hanky. Yep. So it's probably like a rubber. Um. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. You're saying the sentence that you have is look at all those people and then they're watching someone use a condom? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Only only gross people use protection. All the cool people raw dog it. Look exactly. at those bogans. <laughs> Put a bunch of bogans practicing safe sex over there. <laughs> the, the message Novak wants to impart to the youth of tomorrow is that if you use protection, you are a gross person. Also, who the fuck here calls it a rubber? <laughs> we all call it Jimmy Hacks. You know that. Jimmy, yeah. That's what it's for. That be, that's what they're, Jimmy Head is what they're saying on the Australian version of You Tried to. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My real guess is um, will be a handkerchief, like a reusable handkerchief. That pretty much seems exactly what it sounds like, but... What's the original slang again? I've forgotten. Bushman's hanky. Bushman's hanky. It's strange that, like, I agree with Novak, it sounds like it would be a handkerchief, but then why would they call it a Bushman's handkerchief specifically? <laughs> so I'm going to say, like, they're using their shirt sleeve to sneeze into their, like, clothing. Oh, that's good. Mr. Word. <laughs> I think Geiger is a little bit closer here, too. It is the process of clearing one's nose without the assistance of tissue. So specifically, like, if you cover up one nostril and then just, like, snot shoot racket. the snot rocket out onto the ground. Yeah. I don't know necessarily that I'm close. That might be a draw. Do you guys, um, have you ever done a snot racket? Oh, yeah. For sure. I did when, like, I'm running, when I'm running, like, a half marathon or something. It's just, like, that's what you got to do. Yeah. I do it, and my wife thinks it's the most disgusting thing in the world. But I'm like, lots of people do it. I kind of have to sometimes. Ever since I had that surgery, I have a hard time generating moisture in one side of my nose. So sometimes I'll have to kind of like just like, like almost pop my ears. I'm blowing so hard just to get something to come out. It's an <laughs> exciting story. You're welcome. I mean, I agree with your wife. I think that it is the most disgusting thing aside from using a condom. So there you go. <laughs> I think it's gross. I, I'm, okay, I'm more okay when people just hold one side of their nose and blow out real hard than the people that go like, and then they like spit out the booger. That's... 
revolting. That is like the grossest thing someone can do, other than use protection during sex. Be like, oh, uh, I do. I I want to have sex, but hang on, let me just pull out the old Bushman tanky. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Novak actually thinks protection. Wrapping a handkerchief around his penis is what he uses for a condom. Maybe that's... Next one is uh, piece of piss. Piece of piss. <laughs> no piece of piss. The uh, the sentence is, driving to the mall was a piece of piss. Oh, uh, just like a pain in the ass. Okay, Novak, what do you think? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's just... Uh, I was also going to say that, but I'll do the opposite and say... A uh, piece of cake, even though that makes no sense, but... Well, you're right. It, it means it's incredibly easy. Oh, a piece of piss oh, means it was easy to oh. do. That is incredibly counterintuitive. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Australia. Is everything literally backwards there? The toilet sticks go backward and... I mean, the water... <laughs> <laughs> the toilet stick. <laughs> I mean, this the water in the back toilet, to the not toilet the toilet stick. That was <laughs> <such> a... <laughs> <laughs> Man, everything's back with it, including the mythological piece of equipment that we invented. Toilet it's backwards. <laughs> they use their toilet sticks the regular way instead of holding them by the poop end. It's called, it's called the, the Bushman's plunger. It's called the toilet stick. Okay, two more. The next one is a stubby holder. <laughs> We already did rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> the answer, no matter what, is rubbers. <laughs> Usage in a sentence, hand me that stubby holder. <laughs> that clears it up. Thanks. <laughs> uh, use it in a sentence. Stubby holder is a term in Australia. Oh, thanks. Hand me that stubby holder. <laughs> so it's not like a good idea or something. Um, let's see. Let's go with stubby holder. Uh, ashtray. Damn it! That's what I was going to say, actually. Because I was thinking like a stub, like you're putting out a stub of a cigarette. Now I have right. to do something different. Oh, where could you put a stubby? Uh, a, con <laughs> a rubber. You could definitely put it in a rubber. Yeah. What do you, th what do you think in a stubby is? Your dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought that was clear. Um, I will say... Ugh, a, a trash basket, but I really do think it's an ashtray. Hmm, I don't know who to give this to. So a stubby is slang for a beer. Oh, oh so I thought that. And so a stubby that. holder is a... Can coolie? A stubby holder is a beer koozie. Oh, oh. I was going to say that. Oh, jeez. Oh. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> who uses can coolies anymore? Australia. I'll give the point to Novak since he was going to say it, but didn't. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, man. All I needed to do is say that I was going to say the answer. <laughs> also, it doesn't matter because Geiger got the first four, and so we already won. I'm just lining up for this last one. Just like, I was going to say that. Just yell at us. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, last but not least, fair dinkum. Fair dinkum. <sighs> and usage in a sentence last week. I ate three quarters of a chocolate cake. Fair dinkum. So I have heard this term before. I do not have any fucking idea what it means. But I have <laughs> definitely heard someone say fair dinkum. Or was it when I, maybe fair dinklage is what I heard. They're talking about Peter Dinklage. I can't remember. <laughs> um, fair dinkum. It was after uh, Tyrion made some judgment and you were like, well, fair dinklage. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the the usage of sentence is I ate a quarter of a cake, fair dinkum. Three quarters. I last week I ate three quarters chocolate cake, fair dinkum. I would I'll just say like true story. Like I swear to God I did a true story. I ate three quarters of a cake, so that is probably something you regretted. Um Or did I? <laughs> this is me we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe fair dinkum means I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it means that was the warm up. <laughs> Chad ate three quarters of a minty. Fair dinkum. Um, I think it was fuck me, I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> now verbatim, it's got to be that, or he doesn't get the point. Um, Geiger, you got it. It's to emphasize that something is fair or true. So there we go. So Geiger wins five to two, Mister Word. What? 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 So I could basically go to Australia and converse with the locals. For sure, your word knowledge is ubiquitous. I, it is. I know almost. I'm very eloquent in Australian language. Fair dinkum. Ubiquitous. And I can go to Australia and uh, fraternize with the bogans. <laughs> <laughs> You're there to preach non-safe sex. <laughs> <laughs>
I just have a picture of a rubber with a big no sign <laughs> through it. Don't use the Bushman's prophylactic. <laughs> 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 The bogans don't use prophylactic. <laughs> That's probably true. That's why there are so many bogans? They're out there <laughs> rod dingoing. One bogan family has like ten kids in it. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> All right, the violet crumble is our final snack. So the violet crumble is made by Nestle, and this. If this is a candy bar, is this supposed to be a candy bar? Because it's huge. It is very big. So the uh, this is two two servings, though, because if you look at the size... Oh, no, it says servings per package, one. Yeah, no, mine's broken, so I thought originally it was going to be two, but I realized it's just shattered in one spot. 990 kilojoules per serving. What does that mean in calories? Uh, Kg to calories, it means 236 calories for this whole bar. Oh, so could it be worse? less than I thought, actually, considering the size of it. Like that's two Reese's cups, basically, which is way less amount of food. According to this candy bar, though, that's not what matters, guys. Yes, the saying. I love the saying. It's the way it shatters that matters. Yes. yes, that's gold. Are you supposed to just throw it on the ground and see what happens? I think so. This thing is. It's this is like honeycomb or something, right? Yeah, it's honeycomb surrounded in chocolate. Oh, okay. I was gonna say the inside looked like a. Like a sandier Butterfinger almost, but never mind. It almost looks like, like the astronaut ice cream inside. It's a real... Yeah. doesn't taste like astronaut ice cream. It's though. weird. It is a little weird. It does taste like it's not... It tastes sweet and distinctly of a flavor. I couldn't tell if that flavor is honey, <laughs> but it definitely has a... It tastes of a flavor. <laughs> <laughs> it has flavors. <laughs> I'm here to help people. I'm the master of words. <laughs> My eloquent way of describing. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Word? Uh, got flavors! <laughs> Guys, at home, for you guys of you listening at home, I've confirmed it is solid matter. I like the saying of a flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I do see what you mean. There's no, there's no discernible way to describe the, <laughs> the taste. Oh, now who's an asshole? <laughs> right. Ah, it doesn't taste like... I wouldn't describe it as a honey flavor. That's what I mean. If you told me, pick the flavor of the inside, I would not say honey, but I don't know what I would say. I don't either. Oh, I think so. I think if you if you get like a big slice of it and you kind of just chew on the honeycomb, you can like feel that honey flavor like sitting on your tongue, sort of. I tried to just scrape out some of the middle on its own without the chocolate, and I don't know. It's hard, hard to describe. Scraping the middle with my teeth is an unpleasant sensation. It I'll is. Say that. It's not good. Yeah, the middle alone is not good. The chocolate, I think, is kind of saving it. It's like eating a pumice stone. It's a little harder than I want out of a candy bar. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like the I think the hardest I want is like sort of a Kit Kat or that wafer sort of thing. And this is like taking it to the next level and making me like really have to work to bite, which I don't really want to do usually. <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> Someone just open and close my jaws for me. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to sit back and have all the bogans come around and just lift my jaw open and close while they force feed me. Are the bogans like Oompa Loompas? Or are they just down in their luck? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm, I'll go first. I don't really like this. It's not awful, awful. It's not enough to be hate that, but I just would never eat this thing again. It's way too big. On top of that, uh, the inside's not great. The chocolate on the outside's okay, uh, but I'm still going to give it a dislike that. Uh, Chad, what do you think? I liked it at first. First couple bites, I was actually really into it. But then the, the sweetness and stuff sort of like started to build. And I actually think it's a little too sweet. Uh, the consistency, like I said, it's, it's, it's too hard. And the flavor is not good enough to kind of like really justify that. But I don't think it's bad, so to me, this is just going to kind of balance out. I'm going to give this one an indifferent to that. All right, Geiger, uh, in order for this guy to compete, I think you're going to have to give it a love. Otherwise, the twisties are going to take it home. Yeah, well, it, 
fuck that. <laughs> I, that's not going to happen. But I mean, I, I would say this. I, I almost it, it is it's very different for me on two different scales. On the one hand, I don't dislike the flavor that much. I think that flavor is actually kind of good. But I'm with Chad and that Chad really hit on the head where it's too big to have that kind of flavor. Right. So like I could eat maybe half of it and be OK. But if I tried to eat a whole thing of this, it would be way too sweet in the end. Um, but the flavor to me isn't bad. It's the, the, what really brings it down is the consistency when you're crunching into that. Like I mentioned, Novak mentioned scraping out the inside of your teeth just to try to get that part along. So I tried doing that and like that feeling of my teeth was just like really off putting and chewing it. Like I just talked about with the minties. I hate when stuff just gets like glued to my teeth and I felt myself having to like chisel it out of the crevices of my teeth. The stuff was so like sticky and hard like when you it's almost like when you press down on it it like squishes into this almost like the cement on your teeth so uh, for that reason this is going to get an indifferent for me like the flavor is not bad but at the same time i hated the consistency <laughs> so it's right in the middle i'm right down the middle today <laughs> three straight indifference really no no i'm laughing at that you just i mean you said nothing but shit about this thing <laughs> and I was like, I it. <laughs> ah same old geiger no, i mean i like I, li- I don't hate the flavor i i like because again how much of the candy bar i eat is up to me i don't have to eat the entire thing i just do usually <laughs> but like if i was able to say okay i'm only going to eat half of this then that amount of flavor is fine it's just the consistency that would piss me off my own and my own willpower generally trips me up if you um had a stubby and a stubby holder Mm -hmm. to go along with it do you think it would make it more enjoyable oh yeah nothing washes you know what when i'm drinking a nice cold stubby there's nothing i like to pair it with more than a hyper sugary honey chocolate bar that just says game day would you rather pair this with a stubby Mm. or a long black or the other thing they had, which I'm not making up at coffee shops, was called a tall white, <laughs> which is just basically a latte. Are you sure you were at a coffee shop? Or... <laughs> I was at a VIP lounge. <laughs> right, I bet you were. <laughs> Would you prefer the tall white or the long black? Oh. Uh, no, I would. I mean, if we're talking about coffee, then yes, I'd much prefer this to a cup of coffee than a beer. It's a real Bogan's dilemma, though. <laughs> <when they eat. laughs> so do the bogans live in like a shanty town or are they like still part of society i think it's all of queensland somebody told me that queensland is like a redneck state <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> which which i think was true because one of one of our uh, one of our uber drivers when we were in queensland was like saying something about like the indigenous people of Australia that did not sound very good. And I was just like quickly changing the subject. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Chad, what, uh, where would you rate the Australia trip uh, with your other trips? Uh, um, that's hard to say. It was a, a really great country and the food was great, but it was, it's tough to compare to some of the other trips like Madagascar, or Ethiopia or something, because those are just, it's just very different. Going to Australia was sort of just going to like Tennessee or, you know, Texas or something like it just felt like a U.S. city, but everybody kind of has like a weird accent. What town were you in again? What town in Australia did you mostly stay in? We went to Sydney, Adelaide, Brisbane, and then we went up to an island in the Great Barrier Reef. Gotcha. And and yeah, and some all, all the stuff that we did was great. Like snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef was absolutely beautiful. But maybe because we if we had gone out into like the outback you know, and done some like hiking and stuff down there. Like maybe I would have felt a little differently, but we just weren't able to do that on this trip. But it, it was just sort of missing that kind of like a uh, sense of adventure that I usually want when I travel. Yeah. So it, so it just sort of like wasn't as exciting as some of the other countries I've been to. But, but like I said, the food was great and the people were, were super friendly. So we had a great time. One thing you could do to um, add some adventure to your trips is to have unprotected sex. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And I'm going to end up with a bunch of bogans running around my house. <laughs> Can't have that. Did you bring us any snacks back is the most important question. I did. I did bring out yeah. snacks, which I'm going to be mailing to you this week. And so we will be doing some more Australian snacks. Mossy four. Hey, listen to these Americans to a snack podcast in which a full quarter of their content is Australian food. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Well. 
gonna have to come up with more Crocodile Dundee references. <laughs> <laughs> I was fresh out. Was, uh, how much more jokes can we glean from the state of? Uh, well, should we talk about Hugh Jackman next? <laughs> Nicole Kidman. Which uh, we could talk. We could spend a whole episode talking about who's the hottest Hemsworth. Did you bring us some Vegemite? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't bring Vegemite. I actually didn't even try Vegemite, although I had the opportunity a couple times, but I just wasn't in the mood for it. Were Tim Tams everywhere? Or was it just chock full of Tim Tams? Everywhere. So many Tim Tams. Yeah. And they, we brought <laughs> we brought back actually a lot of food, like even just for ourselves. I brought back two packs of double coat Tim Tams that are like just mine. Like I said to my wife, like, I'm buying two packs for me. If you want additional Tim Tams, we can buy them. <laughs> and so I think I think about half wow. of our suitcase was just full of like a lucky girl. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, she lucked out. <laughs> yep, I'm You're a real, real catch. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said it, you were really laying it out. The Tim Tams <laughs> are for me. Do not touch these. Cl- Cookies, no, we're having unprotected sex. Come over here. <laughs> well, uh, you can look forward to Aussie 4 sometime down the road. What we're going to do real quickly is to tell everyone uh, if they would like to comment on the state, sorry state of Bogan lifestyle or to argue with us and actually tell us that protected sex is a much safer and healthier option, <laughs> you can contact us, <laughs> argue. like we, we will really fight you on it. We don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> but you, know, you can get in touch with us at uh, You Tried That on Facebook. We are on YouTube, You Tried That. Uh, hashtag You Tried That on Twitter. We are on SoundCloud. We are on Instagram. Um, you can obviously download our podcast anywhere. Let us know uh, what you think of the podcast, your thoughts, questions, concerns, corrections, suggestions for new episodes, mailbag questions. All of that stuff is very appreciated and uh it's really just uh it's pretty easy to do and in fact one might say it's a piece of piss <laughs> <laughs> we will be back next time and uh but until then have a good time but uh find us next time when we'll be trying three brand new snacks deuces yep <laughs> <laughs>